What's up guys, Wolf here. Welcome to another Division 2 build video. It is time for Bonk 2.0. If you guys did not know, I dropped the original Bonk build quite a number of months ago. And now that we have received a new update with new pieces of gear, I'm happy to say that the build has been improved quite a lot. So please guys, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Let's get straight into the video. If you missed out on the original Bonk build, I wanted to talk about the actual setup and how it works quickly. Just give you guys a summarization of what Bonk really means. So Bonk is when you melee something or somebody or an agent, an NPC. Now this build is primarily focused around PVP. You can use it in PVE, but it's stronger in PVP. So how we get so much damage is from the Lady Death and the Striker Shield. Also damage two targets out of cover and damage to armor. We can also get it from other ways like a talent like Glass Cannon, for example. But this build is going to be spec more towards survivability and utility rather than just plain old damage because you can actually hit over a million damage with your Lady Death and your Striker Shield in one melee shot to an enemy player in the Dark Zone. Over a million damage. With this setup, we can hit along the lines of 750k just above that. And we also have regen. We have some hazard protection we've got high weapon damage that's what makes this build so powerful actually it seems like a troll build and it is and you know we have lots of fun using it it is more of a, a fun build to use but now that we've received new gloves it makes this build very strong and let me tell you guys something right now you can actually one clip someone when you get the bloody knuckles buff you can hit very hard you can one clip someone with two million armor and we can actually two to three shot someone sometimes one shot people with our melee it's incredibly powerful and the fact is when you melee someone holding your shield it auto locks onto a player so you don't even have to aim at them which makes it crazy strong and i think on console it'll be even better so this build yes it's fun and it's kind of trolly it will surprise you and give it a try it's actually quite powerful and that's what i found and what you will see in the gameplay you'll see me going manhunt against some sweaty players and actually face trading some decent players some known players who call me out for running away and then proceed to run away from bonk because they cannot handle it so let's go through the specialization then we'll talk about the build in full detail then you guys can enjoy some juicy gameplay you can use whatever specialization you would like but if you want to get a little bit increased damage i recommend to use the firewall specialization because the striker shield gives us more damage and it gives your teammates more damage as well so make sure this is activated and that you use the shield and you actually place the damage modifications on it. I like this specialization because of the strong armor kit. You guys know that by now. And make sure SMG damage is activated. So when we look at the build as a whole, I want to talk about a few things first before we go through the build in depth. So I have decided to go for more of a regen side of things. So we can actually hit over 850, 900,000 damage if we put contractors and foxes prayer on that does give you more damage obviously it can be situational targets out of cover and armor but in pvp those are very strong especially right now the multiplications are very powerful but the problem is is if you use all damage and you don't think of survivability you will have a problem because you won't be able to push the players you'll get put on the bleed and you just won't be able to get up close to do damage because the whole point of this build is to melee people and also shoot our gun because we get a lot more weapon damage than we normally would have so we want to try to do both and the way that i normally play with this is and you guys will see from the gameplay you strafe around you pull out your shield you melee then you put your shield you holster your shield back again then you run around pull your shield out don't run around holding your shield out sometimes i do it it's a mistake don't leave your shield out because if you lose your shield you are losing a lot of damage and the shield does give you an immense amount of damage if you melee without the shield it's really actually not that good so just make sure you guys pull out the shield i think it's got something to do with the amplification of the shield and the, the melee damage i'm not sure but you hit very hard with the shield so you pull your shield out you melee holster the shield back again shoot rinse and repeat that's normally how i do it movement is very important though but it is very strong because you don't even have to stand still and aim at people this is why this build is so powerful against sweaty players you run up to them you strafe they miss most of their shots you just quickly melee go back into a strafe they will have such a difficult time killing you it's actually really powerful 
So with this setup, like I said before, I haven't gone for more damage. You can hit a lot harder and that's up to you. You spec the build as long as you know that Contractor's Fox's Prayer will give you more damage and Glass Cannon, but I wouldn't recommend using that with Blues. But in this situation, we've gone for more survivability. So to get the damage, guys, you're going to need to use the Strike Shield, the Bloody Knuckles, which to be, to be honest, here's the reason why we use this and not Contractor's because... 25% weapon damage when we melee someone. That's why, because it allows our SMG to hit incredibly hard. Lady Death will do a lot more damage with that 25% increased weapon damage. The 100% melee damage is around about 60,000 increase. It's not even that much. It's more for the weapon damage. So this gives us damage. The shield gives us damage. We also get more damage from the Lady Death, obviously, with the attachment. The attachment is right here. Kiss of Death, one, sorry, 500% melee damage. And the holster, which you can farm from Countdown, just go Claws Out. To get the Claws Out, you go for Wyvern Wear in Countdown, and you should be able to get this named holster with another 500% melee damage. So now you know how we get melee damage, you need to put those pieces on. Then you can kind of switch the build up how you would like it. So the way I've gone for is some armor, regen, and hazard protection. Very important to be able to survive the current meta and get close enough to people to actually be able to do this. So 1.7 million. I wouldn't go less than 1.5, but it's really up to you. You don't even need to go full blues. Just remember that when you look at skill tiers, you don't want to go too low on the skill tiers of the shield. Now, this is up to you guys how you do this. Like I said, I don't need my shield to be that tanky because I only pull it out to melee and then I put it back again. Sometimes you might struggle if you go less than maybe four, four tiers. So that's why it's, it's always good to have more blues, but you need to gauge to yourself and say, is it worth using the gloves? Am I actually going to be shooting? If not, rather use a blue contractor. That's up to you. So with the gun, you guys know Lady Death, we get more movement speed, more damage. It allows us to actually still hit substantially hard. Now, I know this is just a bonk build and our crit damage is very low, but we have got a decent amount of crit chance, which means we can still dish out damage after we've melee someone. So let's take a look at the secondary now you can use whatever you want i've gone for double barrel shotgun with optimist it doesn't really matter you guys can use your imagination or use whatever you prefer to use same with the pistol i use the orbit for extra crit chance crit damage it's every now and again if i can get the proc we can't use the busy little b because we don't have a slot for another exotic unfortunately so when we have a look at the setup now so i have gone for a belston which means i get armor regen very nice armor regen hazard protection it's up to you I would recommend getting some crit chance, hazard, regen. Try go for those. It's really, really dependent on how you want to play, how much armor regen you want, how much has pro. It depends on your situation, but this is my rule of thumb. I just want to try and make sure I'm immune to the bleed damage because Sadist bleed builds are very strong right now. So those are the guys who will take you out really fast. So we need to be immune to bleed. That's how I want to play. So I've gone for more hazard protection as well. So I've got bleed resistance modification on the mask as well with that 1% armor regen. Very nice. Chest piece, I've gone for healer guard to give myself some extra armor to be tankier because I've got bloody knuckles as well. It really makes sense. You don't have to use this. You can go for whatever else you want. It's up to you guys. You can go for more weapon damage for your, your SMG. You can go for more crit damage, crit chance. It's, you, you can go crazy, but I found this to work for me. Crit chance, hazard protection with armor, bleed resistance 9.9. .9. With Unbreakable, Unbreakable is just too good. Make sure you guys utilize this. So with this chest piece, I think it might be difficult to farm the right one, but I'm sure you guys might have some in your stash. Like I said, you don't have to use Healer Guard. It's up to you what you use. Just go for whatever feels better. Also, something you can also, you can go for is the Chill Out Mask. And swap them around, Chill Out Mask. But if you're going to be going for Crit, you know it might be just the same as having a Healer Mask. Just have a look. It depends on what kind of modifications you want to use. Then the holster, we have got hazard protection on the claws out with that beautiful melee damage. And I've got a blue rolled on here. Then the backpack is going to be needed for that extra hazard protection to be immune to bleed and to just mitigate some of the status effects. You guys know what it's like in the game right now. Lots of status effects. We need to try and mitigate as much as we can. Hazard protection, crit chance with a bleed resistance modification. Very good. Very important to use adrenaline rush. It gives us a nice amount of bonus armor. In PvP, it's 10%. Let me quickly showcase that. Push Z. 10% bonus on 5 seconds. This will help you survive 
as always, you could use whatever backpack talent you want, but we need to survive. We don't need any more kind of other methods of damage because we're just going to be meleeing using our weapon. This gives you a lot, especially going up against multiple agents, up to 30% bonus armor. So go for this, guys. It's going to be very, very good. Could even go for the Matador bag and then go for your chest, for example, if you didn't want the healer god. There's so many ways you can switch this up. You kind of, hopefully you're getting the gist of what I'm trying to go for here. Then the gloves, bloody knuckle gloves. I'm sure you guys know how these work by now. Damaging an enemy with a grenade or striking an enemy with a melee attack activates seeing red. Seeing red grants plus 25% weapon damage and 100% melee damage. The great thing about this is it lasts 20 seconds and has a 60 second cooldown after completion. But while in, count, while in cooldown, damaging an enemy with a melee attack or hitting an enemy with, an, with the effect of a grenade will complete the cooldown instantly, which makes this so incredibly good. So it'll basically almost never be on cooldown. So lots of weapon damage, which is great, and a little bit extra um, melee damage. Then the knee pads, I have gone for Emperor's Guard for that extra region. I think it's quite important to ensure that we can get our armor back while strafing around. You don't want to be having to proc armor kits every every minute. I think it's beneficial to have that nice juicy amount of regen. So we've got hazard protection rolled on here as well. So with this setup now, you guys can pause the video if you want to see any of my stats. We have got 57% crit chance, 62% crit damage. And I think it's nice to have at least, you know, at least 25 to 30 thousand regen. I've got just under 40k, which I think is a nice amount. It helps me a lot. Then we have got 68% hazard protection, just under 70, and we are immune to bleed, which is very, very important because the multiplicative sadist weapons are too good. They put you on the bleed, they stop you from being able to strafe, they stop you in your tracks whilst dishing out huge amounts of bleed damage from not only the bleed, but the weapon itself with the crazy sadist talent. It's very strong and we need to be immune to bleed. Now, if you get foamed, you get out of it pretty quick having... 70% or just under 70. As long as you've got around 55, 60% for any of the other ones, it's okay. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of this build. Are you going to give it a try? And if you do, please make sure to come back, pop back in and let me know how the build worked for you. It's a lot of fun. It's quite powerful. And it's something I always keep on me, especially if people are trying to camp you by the door or you want to surprise them and just have fun using this build because it's a lot of fun to use. So with the skills, guys, the Defender Drone is very strong right now in PvP. Deflect Duration, Health, use those mods and make sure you guys put the damage on the shield, damage bonus on the Striker Shield. It gives you a large amount of damage and so make sure this is activated. So that's the thing, you know, specialization wise, I would recommend using the Firewall because of the extra damage from the shield. It's too good to pass up. Otherwise, you only be doing around about 200k a melee. With this now, we are hitting exceptionally hard, over 700k when we have got the bloody knuckles activated. Then with our gun, we can still hit quite hard whilst mitigating so much from our hazard protection, our tankiness and our regen. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the build, enjoy the gameplay, and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Peace out, guys. Nearby agent has become rogue. Rogue agent detected. Extraction helo. Almost Just within range. Rogue status detected by turrets. Nearby agent has gone rogue. Rogue agent nearby. Helo arrived. Engaging landmark. <laughs> DZ drop incoming. Dark zone drop has been delivered. DZ drop incoming. Rogue agent eliminated. Extraction zone.
detecting contaminated gear. Oh, but Explosive seeker mine detected. Hostile explosive seeker mine detected. Hostile stinger hive detected. Vital signs critical. Now detecting contaminated gear. Contaminated gear detected. Rogue agent neutralized nearby. <laughs> Rogue volunteer drone detected. Seriously, this hostile volunteer drone detected. System. Rogue volunteer drone detected. Hostile volunteer drone detected. Broken up. Rogue explosive seeker mine detected. Hostile explosive seeker mine detected. Contaminated gear detected. Defender drone detected. Hostile defender drone detected. Bombardier drone detected. Hostile volunteer drone detected. System curtailed. System back online. Rogue explosive seeker mine detected. Hostile explosive seeker mine detected.
Defender drone detected. Hostile defender drone detected. Detected. Rogue agent neutralized nearby. 